Hello, everyone, and welcome to this PIPlanning.io demo. It's great to have you all here. My name is Raphael, and I work for Rentouch. Rentouch is a Swiss-based enterprise SaaS company developing solutions for agile teams that are geared towards e-collaboration. Our main product is PIPlanning.io. PIPlanning.io offers real-time synchronized boards that are always in sync across locations and that are very, very easy to use. And that's what our customers love about PIPlanning.io and why the biggest lean agile organizations in the world, such as General Dynamics, Dell, Chevron, Renault, not only love, but also trust PIPlanning.io. We have always developed it based on the experiences of our customers, and we still do. Now, strictly following that feedback-driven development approach, we have learned one thing above all. Looking at it from a collaboration perspective, considering complexity and interaction between people, there is no agile event or ceremony that can be even remotely compared to PI planning. Therefore, we cannot rely on collaboration tools that just work well in groups of 10 or maybe 20 people. No, we need something that's optimized for an event in which 120 people and more participating can interact at the same time and that they can focus on their plan and the conversations which lead to our arts alignment. So we need to keep the distraction as low as possible, especially in a remote PI planning. We can't use any clunky tools for PI planning where there is no built-in consistency, for example, across different team boards. With PI Planning IO, we target the different roles in the Scaled Agile framework and enable that their collaborative events get more effective. How so? That's what we will go through in this demo. Here is what I would like to demo to you today. I will divide the demo into three parts. First, I only briefly touch on the subject of PI planning preparation from the RT and STE perspective. Then I will give you a very fast rundown on what your teams can do in PI planning with a focus on alignment. And after, we have about 15 minutes left to go through specific questions. Does that make sense to you? Or do you have a topic that you would like me to add to this list? Then sign up for a demo with your team under piplanning.io slash demo. PI planning IO consists of two components. On the one hand, we have the RTE cockpit. On the other hand, we have the planning environment where people gather for collaborative sessions. The RT cockpit is important because it allows us to define clear guardrails for our art and the teams, which can be used to keep order, especially in a remote PI planning, and give our teams the transparency and visibility they need so that nothing falls through the cracks. The RT cockpit is the control center for the RT and ST. Here the RT creates his art and adds the teams, and the ST can manage the solution trends. We can manage the users that should have access to piplanning.io, and we can establish the ALM connection, and of course, prepare the upcoming PI. Here we define how many iterations to plan, the duration of these iterations, which arts or solution trains are part of this PI, and we can configure every board with our own sticky color scheme. In a distributed setting, it's very helpful if all boards speak the same language. We certainly don't want to see our teams lose time arguing if a user story is yellow or green. And once we are done with the whole preparation, we can move to piplanning.io. Now let's switch over to the PI Planning app. In PI Planning IO, we start from our team board. Here we have all the iterations to plan, we have our risk section, and we have our team PI objectives and uncommitted objectives. On the left hand side, we have a simple navigation where we can navigate through the different boards the PI Planning app offers, such as the program backlog board, the program board, program risk board, and we can go back to our team board. If we click on that button again, we can also navigate to another team's team board. This can be helpful if we want to discuss something or simply see where they are at with planning. Now let me switch back to our team board. Typically, we start from the program backlog board, where we manage the top 10 features ranked by the WSJF value. 
that's this number down here. From this board, we can assign a feature to our team. We can do that by clicking on the feature, clicking on team, and assign it to our team. Now, as you can see, it instantly changed its color. That's something that you can configure in the RT cockpit. And this is very helpful because it lets you keep an overview which features are in planning already and which aren't, which is especially helpful if you have small batch sizes and maybe 20, 40, or even over 100 features on this board. And uh, you need to keep an overview uh, if your teams pick the features with the highest value. Because once it's assigned to a team, it appears on the program board in the column called in planning next to our team name here on the left side. And now what we can also do is we can mirror this feature onto our team board as well, so that we can also build feature swim lines on our team board, which add to our transparency and help with alignment. Now let's switch to our team board. Here you can see that the feature is now in iteration one because we have not really planned it yet. But if we move it, for example, into iteration two, maybe we want to release it already in iteration two, then uh, if we switch to the program board, you can see it gets instantly updated. So those stickies across the boards are always in sync. So that's extremely helpful to keep order. Now on the team board, we want to break down this feature into user stories. And to do that, we simply create sticky notes like we are used to from physical boards. And to do that, we click on the add new button. This opens a sticky palette with all the stickies that we have available on our team board. That's the sticky types that the RT or ST configures in the RT cockpit. Now from the sticky palette, we can drag and drop stickies onto the board. And we can write down a quick summary of this user story. We can also apply a story point value from the Fibonacci selector, or if we use our own values, we can simply type in any value down here. And since we are breaking down the feature into user stories, we also want to link this user story directly to the feature. So we can just grab the string hanging out at the bottom of our user story and drag it over the feature and release. And that's how simple it is to link a user story to a feature. Now, something that you may have noticed is that it, the user story instantly got this ALM work item ID. Now here we synchronize it with Jira. So this is a Jira issue key. And this is also a direct link to Jira. So we can click on that and it brings us directly to the item in Jira that we just created. So with the summary that we wrote, with the story points we applied three, uh, with the link we created between the story and the feature and in which iteration we planned it. And now we can also add some text here, for example, let's say we uh, installation of application on uh, Windows, and we apply that. And once we go back to the PI planning app, you can see that this is in a real time bi-directional sync. So we created it, it got created in Jira, we changed the text, it changed the text on our board. So they are always in constant sync, and you don't have to worry about your single source of truth. Now, during this process of breaking down the feature into user stories, we may also come across dependencies to other teams. To tackle these dependencies, we again simply create a dependency sticky note on the board. Let's write down what we need. And the specialty of the dependency sticky is that we can see which team created it and the arrow from left to right indicates on which team it depends on. And now it says no team because we have not shared the dependency yet with another team. That's something we need to define in our working agreements on how we approach other teams over which channels and 
um, yeah, once we know which team is willing to take on the work or can take on the work, we can click on the depend button and share this dependency with the other team. As you can see, it gets instantly flagged. So there is now uh, this flag up here in the upper right corner. This shows us that this is a dependency that is not yet resolved. Now let's switch over to the other team to see what happened on their team board. So they received the dependency in the exact same iteration where we sent it from. So they know we need that in this iteration. So they need to plan it out themselves, break it down into user stories. And once they know when they can deliver the dependency, they themselves can send it to the program board. Now this button changed from depend to program because now we can send it to the program board in order to visualize the dependency there with a string like we would on a physical board in real life like that. Now we can also remove the flag because the RTE should see that this is a resolved dependency. So here you may notice that we have a vertical dependency, which is somewhat risky to deliver the feature in the same iteration where we are still waiting for stuff to be delivered in order for us to be able to ship the feature. So in the lower right corner, you see one that there is a sign that there is one link that is risky. If we click on that, it shows us which link that is. Now there is another type of links that the PI planning app draws our attention to, and that's the critical links. Critical links is when a dependency is planned after we have our feature planned, which would not work out. So we need to do something about it. And those are in red color because we can't just ignore them. It's not going to work in our plan. So let's go back to our team board. During team breakout session, teams may also identify risks. And risks we can bring to our attention in the risk area. So here again, we can create a risk sticky type. We can write down what risk we see. And the specialty of the risk sticky type is that we can click down here on the Rome button and set the label for resolved, owned, accepted, or mitigated right here on our team board. Or alternatively, we can also say, hey, this is a risk that we need to bring to the attention of the whole train. So in that case, we can just um, mirror the risk to the program risk board. Now, I showed you how mirror works with the feature. It's the same sticky on two boards, always in sync. And here it's exactly the same. So now this sticky is also on the program risk board under the accepted area because we already labeled it as a accepted. If there is no label, the risks from all the teams that are submitted, they come in in the risk submission uh, swim lane down here. And these risks we can then address during program risk session of PI planning and uh, yeah, address them one by one and drag them to the dedicated spot here on the board to roam then. If we update here this risk and place it in resolved, then on our team board, it's now also resolved. So that's how the mirror works. Now for each iteration that we are planning, we can set a capacity up here. We can manually enter the capacity and the load is calculated automatically based on the story points that we have in this iteration here. So let's say we move this user story over to iteration two. Then we can instantly see that we have a an overload now. And this overload is also reflected on the program board. So here we have this red spot and it shows the RTE, which teams have overloads in certain iterations that we might need to address because they may risk our plan. Together with the capacity that we set, we also have a capacity allocation overview up here. So for each iteration, 
we can hover over this pie chart icon and we can see for this iteration what's the ratio between the different sticky types. And if we click on it, we also get it for our whole team. So we can see, okay, that's over all iterations. And um, here we can uh, also see per iteration, how does it look like and where we stand. And there is also the ratio between load versus capacity. So here we can see how, how much do we have planned of our capacity, where are we overloading our iteration. And yeah, that's something that the RTE can also see in a program view. For that, we go to the program board. Up here, we can click on the program metrics button and we can see over all teams how the capacity allocation looks like for our art. And we can also switch to load versus capacity and see over all the teams, where are we at with our plan? So are we generally over planning or are we right within the boundaries? So let me quickly turn to the team board. On the team board, we also have the team P objectives and uncommitted objectives. To edit them, we click simply on the area and we can write down our objectives. We can sort them the way we want. We can also put them to uncommitted or um, we can assign a business value and also the actual business value can be applied. Here as well for the RTE uh, on the program board, we have this PI objectives overview. Here we can see over all the teams what objectives are defined. We can quickly switch to their team board through the arrow key and switch back from the team board also to this PI objectives overview. And on the left hand side, we can put together our program objectives. Now, something that we can utilize in PI Planning I.O., especially in the role of the RTE, is the search, because this is extremely powerful. So we click on the search and we can, for example, filter for dependencies and dependencies with flags so that we can instantly go switch through the different boards. And now these are all the stickies that are on this board, but we can also go to other boards where we have uh, stickies which have a red flag and we can take action. And something else for the RT, which is very helpful to facilitate the sessions is the timer. We have a built-in timer in PI Planning IO, which you can, for example, write, okay, we set the timer for uh, team breakout. We have it here already. Um, two hours, let's start. And now the timer runs down and the whole art will be alerted once the time is up. Additionally, the teams can also set timers for their own team board planning. And once the time is up, only their team will hear the sound and no one else will be uh, disturbed. So this is everything I wanted to show you in this demo. I hope you enjoyed it. We tried to keep the PI planning app as simple and intuitive to use as possible, close to physical pen and paper boards. And I hope you learned something. If you would like to book a personal demo for just for a Q&A after this, go ahead and book a slot under piplanning.io slash demo.